Welcome back to the Samurai 7 Retrospective. And as is customary, the next thing we will be examining is the setting. Now, Samurai 7's setting is very unique, and I feel that it is the thing which sets it apart from the original the most. It's its standout it factor, differentiating it from the source material. While Seven Samurai is set in feudal Japan, and of course is very grounded in the realities of peasant life, Samurai 7's setting is a fanciful mix and exploration of several areas of which have a despondent level of technological advancement and their own unique charms. To start with the lands themselves, the world of Samurai 7 is divided into a few rich locations. There is the mystical Kana Valley village, set in the mountains and inhabited by peasants, living as those that came before them did centuries ago. Here everything is done and harvested by hand. This is the initial setting of the series, and sees several great battles, staying its pristine green fields and forests. Next, there is the big city, which serves as a near complete foil to the village. Where the village is green and quiet, the city is grey and bustling. Where the village is rooted in the past, the city is leaning into a new future. It is cramped and full of strangers and new technologies, all cramming together in a very confined, clustered space. In between these two is the Village of Healing, a vibrant entertainment district incorporating both tradition and technology, and past this, a cave system and a vast desert. Above all of this, literally, is the capital, an incredibly and impossibly advanced flying battleship, decorated and molded into forms and arts of old though. All of these lands are vibrant and beautiful backdrops that the viewer can easily get lost in and explore on their own. Every land feels unique and has its own air about it. They also, however, show a despondent level of technological development, further ingraining the viewer into a sort of odd steampunk world. A world that is both feudal and in the past, and advanced and heading towards the future. This serves to raise a great question about the time period that this world takes place in. Is it an era of the past or the future? You see, in this sort of steampunk feudal Japan, technological development is extremely imbalanced. The futuristic lives side by side with the past in a relatively harmonious blend. The same anime has giant mechs, laser cannons, and cyborgs exist side by side with feudal peasants, ancient traditions, and samurai armed only with swords. On one hand, the setting of Samurai 7 is very futuristic, and one might initially see it as a sort of seven samurai from the future. There are cyborgs, and lasers, and flight, and cloning, and many other high-tech aspects which, even in the real world, we have yet to truly master. However, seeing this as a strictly futuristic setting is of course an overgeneralization, as there is a lot of nuance here. While some aspects of the world may be impossibly advanced, there are also many more aspects of the world which are very much rooted in the past. This is shown by the technological floor of most of society, and in some ways the people themselves. Now when I say the technological floor, I mean the lowest levels of technology often employed, at least en masse. We see throughout the series that while certain technological marvels are available to a select few, the majority of people live either as poor farmers, lacking any complex technology, to city commoners that use equipment that would be about or a little behind what we have today. At the lowest end, the farmers lack almost any technology above feudal levels. The crops are planted and harvested by hand to the beat of drums and the blessings of ancient priests. The villages are quite underdeveloped, and this sets a very low technological floor in a series which also has a very high technological ceiling. This creates a sort of world of contradictions and differences, even if they all mesh together quite well most of the time. This clash and contradiction of past and present even extends into some production aspects of the series. The original soundtrack of Samurai 7 is a production aspect anchored in the past, as it is almost all inspired by traditional Japanese music. Pieces like Samurai and Kiara make extensive use of traditional Japanese percussion, rhythms, and woodwinds to help establish a connection to the past. On the topic of the soundtrack, while it isn't the most extensive, it definitely is very strong, with each piece infusing its scenes with a certain energy. The piece Samurai and its variants, for example, imbue combat scenes with the energy of ancient battles of the past, feeding into the primal fury and emotion of combat. Other pieces, like Kiara, serve to complement this by reflecting upon the loss of battle and the grim history of battles past with slower and more pensive, thoughtful rhythms and beats. Like a true honorable samurai, the original soundtrack is actually very well rounded between fast and decisive action pieces and slower moments of thoughtfulness and contemplation. And like a samurai of old, it also invokes imagery and feelings of a mythicized past just out of reach. Contradicting audio production aspects set in the past, there are also some visual production aspects rooted in the present, or maybe even future. Of special note here is the use of CG, a visual medium which one could argue is a futuristic thing, or rooted in the future. While I at first found the use of CG a little off-putting, as I'm kind of a snob who will always insist on the superiority of hand-drawn animation, 
I understand that from a production standpoint, CG is often simply a lot more practical many times. As the series progressed, though, I soon came to accept the use of CG within it. For one, the CG, at least by 2004 standards, looks pretty good. In addition, it isn't overused. The sparing use of it allows it to be used in conjunction with traditional animation techniques, which I feel is the best way to use CG. I'm glad that the producers took this approach as it prevents the CG materials from standing out too much from the production. However, the fact that the CG does stick out is also kind of a strength of the show, as the sparing use of it is reserved for mechs and futuristic aspects of the series. This literally sets them apart from the animated world around them, and sees them stick out even more. In this case, though, that's good, as the mechs themselves are technological outliers no matter how they're animated. The fact that they stick out emphasizes how futuristic and alien certain aspects of this world are, even if it seems rooted in the past. This in turn establishes the world of Samurai 7 as a world where, even with select great technological advances, much of the tech used by many of the people would still be undoubtedly considered out of date, or around what we have now. It is a world of both the far past and the far future. All of the technological contradictions present here lead the viewer to a central questioning of the setting though, and to ask, is this a land of the past or future? There are arguments for either side here, as there is no clear-cut answer, but I think that's intentional. In fact, I think answering this question is kind of irrelevant, as the answer is meant to be that this is a kind of world in time upon itself. There is no real analog to it, as it's its own unique thing. And this is great, as it allows the setting to serve two other important purposes. This great mismatch of old, present, and new technologies serve to jar the viewer, and kind of force them into the world of Samurai 7, to mostly positive results. By establishing it as a completely unique world, which is all over the place in terms of temporal setting, the setting forces us to discard any previous mental images and ideas going into the series, and immerse ourselves into its own unique world, in this specific rendition of a classic tale. This can make sure that this rendition stands on its own, and yet doesn't necessarily alter the main point or plot of the source material too much. The setting helps distinguish this series, and yet allows it to remain relatively loyal to the source material. Sure, sometimes the inconsistencies seem like a bit much, and there are a few times it can distract or even come off as a bit silly, like the samurai reflecting a massive battleship cannon using only a sword, but for the most part, the atmosphere is enough to overlook the sillier moments and establish the series as its own thing. This atmosphere gives the series a kind of timeless feel, though since the technological floor is more prevalent than the technological ceiling, it is slightly skewed towards the past. All of this in turn serves to fortify the importance and power of the morals and message of the series itself. Again, it should be noted that while this exotic setting is very bizarre and very unique and special, the setting itself doesn't really alter the plot or the morals too much when we look at it, especially compared to the source material. And I consider this a strength of the series, as it's a testament to the strength of the message of the series, and the original. It means that the world is irrelevant to the lessons learned here, and to the humanity experience. It means that the power of the human experience can transcend material boundaries, and that we as a species can empathize with others even if in very different situations, locations, and times. If the world of Samurai 7 is an impossibly fantastic land of technological inconsistencies, of ancient traditions, and many other things in between, a sort of land outside of time, but the lessons and morals of the original still apply here all the same and just as strongly, it means that those lessons and morals are truly timeless and universal. It means that the point of the story is always relevant and therefore impactful and strong. It means that no matter who we are and where we may be, we can all relate to similar ideals and hope to strive to be the best versions of ourselves.